If you remember the first video in this series, we started out with a metaphor. You're minding your own business, walking down the road, and a motorist comes up and asks you for directions. And you give your best account. And we kind of said that this really doesn't happen as much anymore because the advent and accuracy of the modern day GPS has kind of made that kind of anecdotal, hey, let me seek out somebody who's familiar with the lay of the land and have them give me directions. Well, this doesn't happen as much anymore. But an air traffic control, one of the unique things about it is it is always focused on the safest, most efficient and expeditious way to move traffic. And with those three goals in mind, we are able to be that motorist and give clear cut directions to high traffic terminal areas. Now here in the San Juan area on the island of Puerto Rico, we discussed how to get to San Juan and its terminal areas at a local level entering the San Juan flight information region. For you pilots out there, how to properly file inbound into uh, the San Juan terminal area and uh, kind of hinted on the US Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, and the St. Martin and Santa Domingo. We kind of covered the idea that there are airways to facilitate you. But now in this video, the part two, the preferential routing, we are looking, hey, how do I leave the San Juan FIR and go to another terminal area? So the scope of today's presentation, it is really exciting. It is so much fun because this is an area that I really enjoy talking about. We are going to have uh, this presentation its hopes and dreams is to have you kind of get in the mindset, hey, I am going to give you the best way to get to some terminal areas that you want to go to up and down the East Coast for the most part that uh, comply with the air traffic side of the house. Letters of agreement and SOPs, all of those are satisfied when you file these particular routes and procedures that we're going to cover today. So it's really exciting. So welcome back, Steve here. I could not be more happier that you decide to click on this video and join me as we talk some shop. So welcome back. Let's get down to it. Ready, set, jets, go. Let's have a darn good time. In this part two, we are back to the bulletin list. How do I get out of here? You might be asking yourself, well, why would you ever want to leave Puerto Rico? And you might think to yourself, well, hey, I got a passenger to fly or I have a route to give an aircraft to make sure they get to where they got to go. So with that thought in mind, we're going to pick up right where we left off. We are going to explore how to exit the San Juan flight information region. We are going to express sound routing throughout the neighboring facilities in detail, mostly through Miami Center airspace and New York Oceanic airspace. Maybe we'll make another video where we talk about Santo Domingo because Santo Domingo lying to our west, you can transit their airspace and still get to uh, the South Florida uh, metropolitan area, those metro areas, you can get back into Miami Center via Santa Domingo and Hades airspace. So maybe there will be a part three. You never know. We'll see how it goes. Exploring facility directives, as always, and documents to assist in perfecting this attained skill. So without further ado, ready, set, jets, go. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, see you in the next slide. The recurring theme. Last video in the preferential route game part one, we talked about working from the inside out and today is no exception. One of the interesting things is when we start talking about leaving the San Juan information region, luckily we can extrapolate what we're just about to cover here, the departure gates out of San Juan. And if we can find our way to these gates from anywhere else in the sector for you controllers out there, if you can find your way to these fixes, guess what? You already have half the battle won. You find your way to this fix, usually via an airway. And once you tie into those fixes, it's going to tie into a larger route that's going to help you route the aircraft to wherever they got to go. And today's example, we are going to be dealing heavily with uh, the state of Florida and terminals uh, inside those. So let's have some fun. Let's go over the departure gates one by one. What departure gate is this? This is known as the Glata Vermo gate because it serves both the Glata and Vermo SIDs. What departure gates are these? We won't go into too much detail today, but it's the JETS Route 12 and Route 2 departures. So if you're going eastbound, going to St. Thomas, St. Croix, uh, Beef Island, St. Martin, uh, all points going to the east, the Leeward and Windward Islands, you're probably going to file this in the JETS. We have a JETS SID and uh, Route 12. If you are, say, departing East La Grande or any other smaller terminal, it usually 
what happens with that is the jets is basically root 12. So you're able to fly root 12, get up and over the slower props that are on route two, as you see there, and then you can find your way there. That's the beauty about the jets, currently the jets one departure. What departure gate is this? This is exciting. This is the Gambo or Route 9 departure. It's very exciting. The Gambo is able to facilitate traffic going to South America, going to Curacao Center's airspace or Micatia's airspace. So it really, really helps. A great RNAV procedure to get you up and out over traffic that might be coming in from the Northwest and you're able to efficiently make your move as you head southbound to those aforementioned FIRs. What departure gate is this? This is a fun one. This is the Brinken Route 2, also known as the Dorado Gate 2. Uh, a whole plethora of traffic. Most of the traffic going westbound to Santa Domingo is served by this gate, which is really, really exciting because we have been doing a lot more business with, with them when it comes to IFR operations and uh, transiting their airspace going to uh, the South Florida area, kind of like we hinted upon in the last slide and also the western and central part of the United States. Really, really fun. Gulf area, the Gulf of Mexico, you can find your way uh, to Houston Center's airspace by starting your voyage going westbound and going through Santo Domingo. And last but certainly not least, one of the most popular uh, ways to get out of the San Juan FIR, and a very popular way to get out of the San Juan terminal area is the Jaws of Coney gate is very exciting is served by the Coney departure or the Coney SID and the JAWS SID. So here you have your choice. How will you see that we are already starting our journey off the runway environment with San Juan Tower? Let's just, let's just pretend that we are departing San Juan or even off the runway environment and Isla Grande Airport and you are starting your journey through an outbound fix. Excellent. We covered that. Now just remember some of the fixes that they are related to. A Coney is a fix. Jaws is a fix too, but a Coney you will see if you're trying to get to South Florida, a Coney is your lifeline. There's a lot of cool airways that go through or start at a Coney and they're going to take you to where you need to go without having to file over many nav aids or other fixes or other airways. There are direct dedicated highways that emit from a Coney. Very exciting stuff. So we're gonna get into a detail with that. Let's take a look at what these look like on the plates, on the charts, and let's keep the good vibes going. Here we go. So, quick detour before we hit up the charts and the plates and the procedures, we are going to take a look at a very fundamental document, the standard operating procedure of the San Juan CRAP, a very fundamental document as we controllers use it to route you pilots, if there are pilots in the audience, to get out of the San Juan terminal area. This is by the book. Not much more accurate than that. And starting off with the Vermo gate, also known as the Galata gate. And you see there that there are, if you aspire or would like to fly these various routes in the 455, 456, 459 northbound, you can file these routes. Very simple there. The Vermo DP, departure procedure, or the Galata DP. So these SIDs, obviously they change every charting cycle. So they go up in numbers so we don't have them listed here, but that is the particular SID that you should file, leaving San Juan or file over those particular fixes, say if you're in Isla Grande or Arecibo departure, or maybe Seba departure, you should go through those gates to join with the traffic flow. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I believe the plate is up next. So let's uh, take a look at that. As you see here, we have just made it over to the plates. So you can see the entire illustration, the entire plan view. I took myself out of the bottom left window, which is fine. I'll be back soon. Taking a look, starting with the Vermo 6 departure. You see it is not a very complex procedure at all. Basically, you are going to join Route 9 off the San Juan Vortex. You can't get much simpler than that because as you see there, it is the 004 radial off the San Juan Vortex. And from Vermo, you will see in the next slide, we're going to take a look at what Vermo looks like on a grander scale when we go to the charts. But for now, you see you're going to fly whatever the heading San Juan Tower gives you. It could be standard. It might be different depending on what kind of conditions are taking place in the surface area. And there you go. Expect to get to Vermo. 
slightly more complex and more capable SID because it's dealing with a more capable piece of technology, RNAV GPS, the GLADA 3 departure as it stands now. You see there you have the San Juan terminal area kind of depicted with the runway complex, GLADA, the headings, and you see how it branches off like a tree, like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree, you know, the one that was really kind of not so healthy looking. But you see that after GLADA, and it spreads off, you can find your way to Maycourt, which we're going to see that leads to Lima 455, Parcha, and Nubis. We're going to talk about the Lima Airways just a minute when we get to the chart, and Kika. So you have a lot of interesting transitions here to get to where you got to go, and all of these transitions lead to New York Oceanic Airspace, and we're going to follow some of these airways and see where they take us, take us excuse me, and that's going to be very, very exciting. Just as a little disclaimer, make sure prior to uh, doing any kind of flying, make sure you procure the most current charts. Currently, it is the Burmo 6 and it is the GLADA 3, but these are not suitable for navigation. So just remember, procure the latest up-to-date charts if you are going to file these particular procedures. Wonderful, let's take a look now we have found our way to get the Vermo. We have taken a look at some of the transitions on the GLADA. Let's see where we can go from there. One procedure down, let's find an airway. Next slide, see you there. Well, hey, it's good to be back in your bottom right-hand corner there. So as you see here, we are looking at a controller chart, slightly different than what you might see on Sky Vector or the procured charts that you get from the FAA or JEP. But here we are. Nonetheless, we have cropped it. We are taking a look at the northern part here. Now, if I were to find my marker here, and let us just get a frame of reference. Where exactly are we? Because we're still trying to get out of here. We are still asking ourselves here, how do I get out of here? Working from the inside out. And the previous slide, you saw that we were able to find our way to Vermo, and we were able to find our way to Glata, and thus Vorsi, if you were to follow that chart, as that little tree spread out. So let's see what or where are we talking about here? Here we are with Vermo. That's exciting. And we will emphasize, since we're going to take for granted that most of the aircraft that is going to transition uh, New York non-radar oceanic airspace, you have to have certain equipment capabilities. And kind of by default, if you are flying through that airspace, chances are you have some form of R or GPS capability. So you see where we can go with Vermo, and to cover it real quick, from Vermo, since that's where Route 9 ends, you can continue to find your way to Thank, and Thank is the starting off point or a intersection of high traffic airways. You have Lima 456, which is right here, just continues from Thank. Out of Thank, you can join Lima 458 to Cheddar, and you can join Mike 597 to Kika. So basically, giving you all kind of awesome choices to go to the Northeast. Now you're talking if you're going towards Europe and North. And it's kind of a disclaimer, it's not true North because it's more like Northwest because eventually you're gonna see when we uh, look at another chart, that you're gonna find your way to the New York uh, terminal area. You're gonna find your way to the East Coast of the United States. And from Vermo as well, not to neglect, you can find your way to Kinch or Ferna to join the respective airways to Maycor and join Lima 455. And it's gonna be very exciting. You're going to see where all these airways end up. It is really, really cool. Uh, these airways are very, very useful, uh, saving you time and fuel because they are very direct. It's called Waters Airspace. I think it's called the Western Atlantic uh, Route uh, Transit System or something like that. It's known as Waters Airspace and it's really, really exciting. So. Now to the GLADA. From GLADA, which is not depicted because it's really close, but it did take you to Vorsi. And there's Vorsi right there. And from Vorsi, <clears throat> the published transitions, there is a Parcher transition, Anubis transition, and a Kika transition. So as you see, the RNAV counterpart to the Vermo is this. Now, in full transparency, there is one more fix after GLADA, which we also don't have depicted here in this particular illustration, the fix Molly. But you can go back to the previous slide and see. It goes GLADA, Molly, Orsi, and you see those branches start spreading out. From Molly, you can file the Maycor transition. 
taking you over the fixed sternum. And then you can join Lima 455, which is very exciting too, because as you see, the way we do business, uh, now to the controller crowd here, is you know that we coordinate boundary time, level, and Mach number at the various fixes. So if you're a pilot, just remember that we are probably gonna solicit not the Maycor, Parcha, Nubis, or, well, we will solicit the key estimate, but those other fixes, we're not gonna ask you for times there because as you see here, in very faint gray, you have the boundary. And here is where we do lots of our coordinating. We coordinate what time you will be there, what speed you'd like to be at, what altitude you're requesting. And the New York Center controller places that into a machine, very interesting platform called ATOPS, Advanced Technology Oceanic Procedure. And it's this wonderful graphical user interface. They plug in some numbers, those numbers that we provided, and it sees if uh, there are conflicts, it probes for conflicts. It's absolutely wonderful, capable platform. So you guys remember, controllers, that we are going to ask for those boundary time and estimates because we are looking at making making it easy for those pilots to transition to the terminal areas. Mostly you're going to see aircraft going northeast of Europe and just about anybody going to any point, uh, Washington DC and north, there are some airways and procedures that uh, utilize uh, this particular route structure. Just remember that you have to, uh, if you are giving a, a clearance, if you are giving a route, remember that the aircraft does have to have HF uh, at the very least HF capability because they're going to talk not so much directly to the New York Center controller but via aeronautical radio incorporated air rank on HF band because that's the way it works or they have CPDLC uh, controller pilot data link connection uh, at the very least those are the two equipment uh, requirements they have to have but don't worry if they're not able to do this we can go back and we can find our way via the Miami route but this is particularly very useful for all traffic going to Europe or north of Washington, D.C., all the way up to Canada. So absolutely wonderful. So good job so far. Thanks for sticking with me. Let's keep it going. Wonderful. Now, we have gone a long way. We've gone about a thousand miles to the slight northeast, and you're going to see some very exciting things here. What is awesome is you see this point Savic. This is an intersection even though it's uh, listed as an RNAV waypoint, it is an intersection of Lima 455 and Lima 456. And this is, on, or I'm sorry, Lima 459, excuse me. Lima 459, Lima 45 is here, Lima 459 is there, and you see how it combines up. It's even listed there, and it combines up. And if you were to look out and zoom out, you're going to see that is the east coast of the United States. You see coil there, so that's somewhere around the uh, New Jersey, New York area, Washington Center's airspace. You can see that a little bit depicted there. You see New York Oceanic airspace is right there. Very exciting stuff. One airway, one SID, and one airway, and look, you are just in the thick of uh, densely populated uh, airspace high volume airspace, but major terminal areas of the United States. So this is a very good catchment of terminal areas that you as pilots want to get to. And we as controllers, we will use this to get you there. So very exciting there. And just one more is worth mentioning. Lima 456 and 461, they converge on Merrick. And from Merrick, you see that New York Center or the New York FIR has a plethora of wonderful Metroplex Airways, Yankees now, that, since they go over water, and they will get you to where you got to go. They will take you to uh, the Kennedy VOR, where you can join other RNAV routes or the J routes or Victor Airways, depending on what air, airport uh, or terminal area you are trying to get to. So very exciting stuff here thus far. So there, we basically, in the course of just under 20 minutes, uh, with the introductory slides, we told you how you can easily get to the New York terminal area. And uh, that even is kind of a limiting term. You can find your way to Philadelphia, the Washington DC area, New York area, Canada, Boston, and all points going further north. So great job with that. Let's keep moving on. Let's find our way towards the Miami FIR in the next slide. Good job, guys.
So far, so good. One major departure gate down, one more major departure gate to go. My personal favorite when we are talking departure gates and how to exit the San Juan terminal area or make it even more broad, how to leave the San Juan FIR. This one is very useful. You're gonna get a lot of utility out of this one. The JAWS, AKA the Oconee gate. Now, as you see there, there is a plethora of airways that go through this particular gate. And when you want to join those airways, this is the procedure for you. This is the SID for you as you slap the hood like a used car salesman. Now, Green 431 really doesn't exist no more, don't worry. There are plenty of alternates to make up for that legacy ATS route. But you see there the list of airways that you have an option to fly out, and there are even more. And we'll explain that in just a second here. So we're going to heavily focus today on JAWS and Oconee, those particular procedures. So let's think northwest of the island of Puerto Rico, going towards Miami Center's airspace, the Miami Oceanic FIR. Okay, let's take a look at those charts. Here we go. How exciting is this? Look at us looking at charts again. And charts are absolutely awesome. So we kind of changed up. We put the RNAV one first here on the left. And you see currently as it stands, it is called the Oconee 3 departure. Very interesting thing about the Oconee 3 departure you see is there is only one published transition. And if you recall from the last slide, it is the premier SID if you want to join the Airways Yankee 280, Yankee 308, and the Yankee 185. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Steve, how do I do that? There is no published transitions that will take me to those boundary fixes, which we will cover in the next slide when we take a look at the air traffic controller chart. So until the Oconee 3 departure gets changed to include the FECO and Dongku transitions, which apparently uh, in the world of the FAA takes, uh, I guess, a little more time than we would care to admit, you can file the Oconee 3 departure, you will fly to Oconee, and then, as depicted, the Pauti. and if you do not want to go to Sapo, and we're talking the FECO and Donku transitions, from Pauti, you will file direct to those boundary fixes. I cannot find the particular NOTAM that states that this is the preferential way to get to those boundary fixes. And this leads me to a very good point. There is a very, very good FAA page. All you have to do is a simple Google search for FAA NOTAMs, and it takes you to a very easy uh, to use, very user-friendly site where you can see all the current NOTAMs. And it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because it kind of affirms what we talked about last video on how to get into the San Juan terminal area. So just as a tagline there, always check your note DMs, always procure the most current charts. Cannot emphasize that enough. So now we have a way to get to Donku, FECO, and SAPO. So now we can join Yankee 280, Yankee 308, and Yankee 185 and get to Donku. Uh, why are we so particularly concerned with getting to Donku? Well, we'll see here in a minute. And going back to SAPO, that published transition, SAPO not only serves Yankee 280, but we're going to see Yankee 399 is equally as useful to be aware of. And Yankee 399 does, in fact, start at SAPO. So keep that in mind. Now, the less appealing of the two, very mundane, also user-friendly because it is very simplistic in its innate nature, the JAWS 2 departure, and as you see there, just like with the Vermo, it is basically flying a radial off of the San Juan Vortec. As you see there, the 326 radial is essentially a Route 3 off San Juan, and you see there it goes to JAWS. JAWS and Oconee are practically co-located, and then from JAWS it goes to Utah's. Once upon a time, you were able to join Red 507 off Utah to get to SAPO, and you were able to join or get to the fix Elmuk, which used to be a published, which used to be a more useful fix in the world of San Juan air traffic control at one point in time via Green 431. <clears throat> Elmuk is still there, but the transition, uh, as you see, is gone from the Oconee 3 departure and was never really a published transition on the JAWS to begin with. But it gets to Utah's. And it's a great jumping off point to get to any boundary fix that lies within the San Juan and Miami 
Flight Information Regions Boundary. So we're going to talk about more. It's kind of uh, abstract at this point because we don't have any charts to give it some context. So why don't we do that? Keep this in mind. We're talking Utahs. We're talking Oconee and Pauly. And let's take a look how we can join some major arteries to get to the South Florida terminal areas. All right. See you in the next slide. Yet again, I will keep myself out of the bottom right-hand corner because there's some important content there. So if you remember, one of the things that we were looking to get to was the fixed Utahs and the fixed Pouty, more or less. Now, Pouty is not depicted because, as you see here, we are on a controller chart, no longer on a plate of a particular procedure. We are looking at a more grander scale. So with that thought in mind, let's cover the simplistics up. Utahs, right here, from Utahs, as you see, it is essentially Route 3 off the San Juan Vortec. You can go just about anywhere you like. You can go direct FECO, you can go direct SAPO, you can go direct Donku. You see Elmux there, and as it's written, a lot smaller font than any of its counterpart, just because its importance went from a very high level of importance down to somewhere around here where we barely even use it anymore. There you go. So there's no published transitions, but no, from Utah's, you can get to FECO, SAPO, and Donku. Now, here's the cool part. Oconee, we knew that there was a SAPO transition. Right here, SAPO, yay, SAPO, there's a transition. But as we said, and as you will look, Pauti lies somewhere right around here. Now this is not accurate, but this is essentially the Pauti area. Let's just call it that, okay? Pauti there, I'll spell it out there, Pauti. Great fix, and from there, you can use Pouty and get direct to FECO, which takes you to Yankee 308, which is very, very exciting. SAPO, we already talked about it. You see red, the remnants of Red 507, but you have Yankee 399 and Yankee 280. You have Dong Ku, which we are going to explain how useful Dong Ku is. So those are awesome transition fixes. One day in the future, and it will certainly supersede and date this presentation, we will have a FECO and Donku transition where you do not have to file direct from Pauti. Now, the importance of a Coney is the fact that the airways, Yankee 280, Yankee 308, and Yankee 185, all go through a Coney. So we are talking about you controller types, you people who are looking to get an aircraft on these airways so you can follow them to their termination points or follow them to a point where you can have them pull off the airway, join a SID, or excuse me, join a STAR and get to the terminal area. Now that is exciting and that is our goal today. That is what we'd like to talk about. A CONI is very, very useful. Major airways of the Metroplex project that San Walden was included in, the South Florida Metroplex project, a lot of those airways transit through a CONI and that makes life a lot easier. So as you see here, we can get to these fixes by the JAWS or Oconee SIDS, but also remember that Oconee, the fix in and of itself, is infinitely useful when you are trying to get aircraft out of San Juan Center's airspace, flying northwest into Miami Center's airspace. So with that in mind, let's take a look and explore some more features of this particular area of airspace, okay? We always find it very useful to back up what we say here on these presentations with facility directives and very resourceful documents. And today is no exception. Here you have a sky vector snapshot of one area in particular of Miami Center. Now we have left San Juan Center entirely because San Juan, if you want to know where this is at in Sky Vector, is somewhere down to the bottom right of the screen. But let's take a look at what this LOA, this letter of agreement, has to say between us and Miami Center, us being San Juan Center or San Juan CRAP. Northwest bound aircraft filed over Lamer, Beaton, Lenholm, or Lucky, or Rena must enter Miami airspace over Donku. After Donku, the aircraft may be cleared direct to or established on the appropriate route to Lamer, Leton, Lenholm, Lucky, Rena, and reroute entered in the computer. Cool. We're going to cover this in the following examples. These fixes are very important and they are worth knowing. Leton is synonymous with Lima 451. Awesome. Lenholm, 
Very useful airway. Lima 452. Lamer. Lima 453. Lucky. Lima 454. And Yankee 185 and Yankee 355. Rena, which you can go Golf 446. And a whole bunch of other airways. But Golf 446 uh, and Yankee 185, more or less. Now, what's so useful about this, you might ask? Well, let's cover that real quick. If we are able to follow this letter of agreement, one, we are transitioning aircraft, helping out this particular sector of Miami Center's airspace, sector 63, also known as CERTA. Throwback, there is a fixed CERTA in this airspace. It's like down here. And from here, guess where they're going? They are going to the New York Flight Information Region. They are going to New York Oceanic Airspace when they file or fly on Lima 451, 52, 53, and 54. Where does Lima 451 go? It terminates at a fix called Oldie. And Oldie is just a very short hop away from Carolina Beach. So now we are talking of UR, and that gives us some geographical reference. We're talking the Carolinas. We are basically in North Carolina, which is exciting. Lima 452 goes to Oxana. Oxana is very useful because guess what? A short hop away, if you fly uh, AR8, Atlantic Route 8, you are at Elizabeth City. So you're still talking the East Coast. How wonderful is that? You have found land. Lamer goes to the, well, it's right off the coast. It doesn't terminate at a nav aid. And it does follow and go through just about the entire oceanic area, just off the east coast of the United States. But this is perfect because it starts getting really close to land and you can find your way to the Newark, New York and Philadelphia terminal areas when you file Lima 453. And Lima 454 is exciting because we know for sure that it terminates at the Kennedy VOR. So at the very least, you can at least find an aircraft, a very straight shot way to get to Kennedy. And Miami Center will do the same thing. They will give the New York controller these Leton, Lenholm, Lamer, and Lucky time and level. What's useful about Golf 446 and Yankee 185 here is that this will eventually leave Miami Center's airspace and go towards Jacksonville airspace, being in radar contact the entire time. You see here, when they go to New York Center's airspace, we're talking that HF issue. At the very least, they need HF and some more complex navigational capabilities or CPDLC because they are going into an area where there is no radar and HF is the only band that's going to work for communications. But the nice thing is you have Yankee 185 and Gulf 446 at your disposal where in fact those aircraft will be in radar contact, radio contact with Miami Center and then leading up to Jacksonville Center. So now you are progressing aircraft way, way beyond Good old San Juan Center's airspace, but on an accepted and published route. Very exciting stuff. So it was very much so important that we cover this very important caveat of the letter of agreement. And these are very wonderful points indeed. And we kind of discuss where all these airways will end up. So, and we didn't really talk about Gulf 446. Gulf 446, guess what? It is a perfect alternative to Lima 451 because they both go to Oldie. How exciting is that? Both go to Oldie. And Yankee 185 goes to a fix called Manly. It goes a little farther. It ends there. And how awesome is this? Manly is basically just a couple, I'd say 50 miles south of Ormond Beach. So now you're talking around the Daytona area of Florida. So now you're on the northern side of Florida, practically really close to the Georgia line. So the Atlanta terminal area, is easily served by Yankee 185. So this is very, very exciting stuff. So this is just stuff to keep you in mind, keep you in mind, give you a sense of orientation. Where are you sending these airplanes? What's well, always good to know, and it's always good to honestly answer that question. Stop yourself and say, where am I sending these airplanes? So very good job with that. So I'm happy we had that discussion. Now let's get to some practical application here. See the next slide.
Wonderful. Look at us. Back at a bulleted list. How do I get out of here? We are leading up to the point where it's useful for everything. We're going to tie in what we want pilots to know, what we want controllers to know, and combine it into a sector-specific exercise. So great job so far. Give yourself a pat on the back. We are in the home stretch here. Now that we have the logic and understanding, let's put it to use, right? Let's put it to practical application. Wonderful. Off to the sector. Ready, set, just go. I am excited. This is going to be a fun setup. Uh, let's do the darn thing. Awesome job. Look at us. We are sitting, depending on what position we are at, probably not so much the R side, the radar controller, but if we are the radar associate, the D side, or if staffing is nice and we have an A side at the position, we are going to comb through our proposals. Now, as you know, San Juan is kind of unique where our automation system does not really have a graphical user interface where we are clicking and changing things. We have strips and we have a computer system known as a flight data input output. We use the flight data input output to produce strips as you see there. And the strips are very useful. They are static. They're real physical things that you can touch and write on. So it is a fine substitute for uh, an electronic version of this where that's more prevalent technology in the continental United States. But nonetheless, this is exactly what you will do when you're the A side or D side. And for you pilot folks out here, this is what we do to make sure, make sure that you get to where you got to go safely and correctly, obliging and following all those facility directives that we have covered uh, now up until leading to this point. So if you're sitting at your leisure, we are going to take it strip by strip, bottom to top, let's scan for faulty roots and fix them. And when I say faulty, they're not necessarily bad roots. They are going to get you to where they gotta be, but they may not follow the SOP. They may not follow the letters of agreement. They may not follow the way aircraft gotta go, the traffic flow. There is a lot of traffic that departs this part of the world and gets grouped up and starts going up and down the East Coast, and a large population in the United States of America and Canada, well, they're settled on the East Coast. You have major core airports up and down the East Coast. Starting the further south, you can assume that it's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, moving upwards to Orlando. Now you're talking the Atlanta terminal area. Not too far from Atlanta is Charlotte. Not too far from Charlotte is the DC area. Not too far from the DC area is Philadelphia, Baltimore. Now you're in New York. And guess what? Now you're into Toronto's airspace. And then if you move any further north, now you're talking about traffic that is going to start joining the hop over the pond and over to Europe. So the East Coast, starting with good old San Juan, you are setting a major precedent. You are being very helpful in making sure that these aircraft are established on these particular routes, these established route, not point to point, not randomized, not just one fix and then the terminal area, assigning a SID, or excuse me, assigning a star, that's important business. So let's take this first one, this Aguadilla departure. Uh, Rankin Hairbag, Providenciales, Ducky, Nassau, Treasure, Direct Orlando. We can do better. So random route to Orlando, we can do better, and let's see what that is. Let's let's give this a try. Here it is. Let's put them on a mid. The CID, Field 10, Barinkin, Hairbag. We didn't talk about this airway, but you'll see Yankee 421, Octal, Direct Baron, and the Baron 4 into Orlando, which is awesome because the Baron 4 in particular serves major airports in the Orlando terminal area, including Orlando, MCO, Orlando Sanford, Orlando Executive, Kissimmee. Wonderful stuff there. Perfect. Look at that. Yankee 421 goes to Octal. And keep in mind, Yankee 280 that we did talk about goes to Octal. Okay, let's keep it moving here. What's wrong with this one? Legacy ATS routes. Let's take a look at this. VC Bird. Okay, so we're talking the southeast corner of our airspace, San Juan Center's airspace. Gabar, Green 633, St. Croix, San Juan, Sapo, Red 507, Grand Turk, Amber 555, Nassau, the DKL5. We can do better. This is a very common route. There is a lot of traffic that departs this part of the world, not only Puerto Rico, not only the U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands, but just about everywhere southeast, there's a lot of traffic 
going to the Fort Lauderdale area. And the neat thing is with Metroplex, these particular new set of Y routes, they were able to differentiate between Miami Terminal Area, which takes care of the airports of Tamiami, TMB, uh, Homestead Air Force Base, HST, and awesomely enough, Miami Airport, right? Miami-Dade County Airport, and separate it from the Fort Lauderdale Terminal Area, which includes Fort Lauderdale Executive, FXE, Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport, FLL, Hollywood Airport, HWO, Opelika, OPF. So now we're talking, we're able to localize that traffic and find some streams because it used to be when everybody after San Juan, when you would leave the San Juan area and leave the flight information region, just about all that traffic was going to join up in Amber 555 because Nassau, as we're going to see in this presentation, Nassau, the VOR in the Bahamas, is a transition point for major stars going into Miami, the Fowey and the Flipper, and also the Fort Lauderdale area. And you saw all the airports that we just lifted off. Opelika, Hollywood, Lauderdale, Lauderdale Executive. There is a lot of traffic there to be on one airway. So we created different tracks, or the they did, the, the collective they, the very heavily uh, wisdomful, if that's such a word, they. So let's take a look. What, what's, what's better? I'm in. Okay, we got the CID in there. Gabar, I like it. Yankee 280, which is awesome. Sapo, very useful fix, right? Boundary fix. Yankee 399, we hinted on that, that it begins in Sapo. To Bimini. Decal. Five. Wonderful. Very simple. 308, Gabar, Yankee 280, Sapo, Yankee 399, Bimini, decal five. Bimini is just a little bit a ways from Nassau, also on Amber 555 as well. But you see how absolutely wonderful it is that we are at Sapo. There's a divergence. You have Yankee 280 and Yankee 399. And there we go, starting those super highways, individual tracks to get to these terminal areas. Wonderful job. Yankee 280, very useful airway. One of the longer Metroplex routing systems. It begins at Humble, Old Gabar. And where does it go? It goes all the way to Leeville, Lima, Echo Victor. Leeville, which is on the Gulf Coast. So you're talking the start of a major transition point to get to the west coast of the United States or the Texas area where a lot of our traffic also goes. So very exciting stuff that these airways are very important, very integral, uh, not only to this particular region, not only to, to the San Juan and Miami area, but to the NAS in and of itself. So let's take a look at this. Not terrible, but we can do better to get the Bahama Route 54 Victor. We are trying to get to Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce is, uh, you know, situated on the west, uh, excuse me, on the east coast of Florida, near the Palm Beach area. And there is a particular preferential route to get to that particular airport. It takes care of Fort Pierce, uh, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, Stewart. And let's see exactly what that looks like. So let's get to the computer here and let's amend. 134, we're talking a bar again. And now we're talking Yankee 280, very useful airway to the point Sumac. Isaac, and look at that. Isaac is on Bahama Route 54 Victor, and you tied it back in, and you gave Palm Beach VOR direct. And that at least starts having that aircraft join and split off into that particular area uh, for those uh, terminal areas in the state of Florida. So let's keep going here. This is a good route. As we just as we talked about in the last video, uh, Guadalupe, Pointe de Pitre, Red Triple Eight, Modix, St. Croix, Route 4, Vita, San Juan. You cannot get any more SOP compliant than that. Even this one, wonderful job. Anada, Nagan, Big B, uh, that is basically taking care of that aircraft is going towards the west. They're going to Jamaica at this point. They're going through Domingo's airspace. And this is a fine way to get through the San Juan FIR. There are no qualms about that. And the last one, eh, doesn't look so good. And why? Well, it's a legacy ATS. It's a metric, Metroplex hybrid. There are some good elements in there, but let's clean it up. As we talked about, from Bird going to Austin, Texas, and you see Yankee 280 Oconee, okay, Yankee 330 Antox, Antox Antox, then they go back to a legacy route, back to an ATS route to get to Grand Turk. Amber 555 Nassau, Bahama Route 54 Victor to Palm Beach, which we just talked about in the last example that we corrected. Bahokee, Sarasota, 
Q100 to Leeville, J86 to Beacon, Q, uh, what is it, 56 to Holler, uh, D-Boys, and for the Willie Bar. Now, we talked about LEV, we talked about Lee Michael Victor, the Leeville VOR, and how Yankee 280 serves that. Guess what? Let's take the complexity out of it and make it simple for the flight crew, make it simple for the downline sectors. Yankee 280 connects Gabar and Leeville, and that is so awesome, and it's just like completing an awesome puzzle. Like, oh, I'm able to do more with less. So this is a very easy amendment. Amend this particular CID. You're going to change it to 10. You're going to tie it in with the Gabar, Yankee 280, the Leeville, and there you go. Wonderful job with that amendment, okay? So you see how easy it can be. All it takes is just a little bit of knowledge of the map, a little bit of perfecting your inputs in the FDIO, and you got it made. So let's keep going with the examples. Great job so far. Okay, almost done. We have just a couple more flight plans to go. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Ah, not so good. Why doesn't it look good? Now, I may not know all the fixes here, but they departed Antigua, BC Bird, Alopo, excuse me, Yankee 355 to Arena, Yankee 585 to Civic, Yankee 185 to Baird, Yankee 585 again back to Ormond, Taylor, Valdosta, Montgomery, Memphis, I think that's Razorback? I could be wrong. Romeo Zulu Charlie to Kilo Romeo Oscar Gold. How can we fix that? Well, we talked about how Yankee 185 is very, very, very useful, and they even filed it some aspect of the route. You see how there's context clues in here? Yankee 185 goes to Manly, and we know Manly is just about 50 miles south of Ormond Beach. We can clean this up. First, Elopo Yankee 355, San Juan, our SOP kind of dictates that we do not go, well, actually, it's the San Juan and Miami letter of agreement that states that if they're going to file Elopo Yankee 35 to Reno, that's not the way you go. Remember what the LOA said? We have to go out Don Coo or the airway that goes through Don Coo. We will not be going northwestbound over the fixed flight pack. Miami gives us southeastbound traffic over flight pack. So you see how this needs fixed regardless, uh, one way or another. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to pick up on the context clue. We're going to assign Yankee 185, which we know how to get to. And there's a couple ways to do that. And we are going to make sure that this aircraft is compliant with the letter of agreement with Miami Center as they make their way towards uh, the Mississippi Delta area. Okay, yeah, found out on over flight pack. That's a no-no. So let's fix it like this. On the end, you see the particular CID. We are talking another 10 amendment here. Elopo is our context clue. Yankee 318 is a fantastic route that takes us to Don Coo. You can follow that on the chart. And there we go, Yankee 185. And then we could tie it in the beard. We don't even necessarily have to give Manly. We can let the next facility, which we are getting, make, we are making sure this aircraft gets from San Juan Center's airspace, follows the SOP, follows the LOA with Miami, and if Miami wants to give them direct or some other routing, that's their prerogative. But at least we satisfied what we have to do in terms of good route assignment. Okay, great job. Let's keep up the good vibes going. This is a fantastic route to get to Chicago midway. It's very weird sometimes the idea of assigning aircraft to go up the East Coast on Lima 451 when they're trying to head out towards the Midwest but that's the efficiency of the Lima air routes at play. So that is a great route. Now you might be thinking on this particular example, Steve, there's something wrong with this. Look at this, this guy's going to Providenciales and he filed nothing but legacy routes. Well, that's perfectly fine because they are going to an airport that is not truly kind of in the heart of Metroplex. This is uh, an airport which is just outside of San Juan's airspace, San Juan Center's airspace, just a little bit into Miami Center's airspace. And back in the day when they assigned these colored airway air traffic service routes, you know, the airways had to follow uh, the island chain because was that's where the VORs were located in the NDBs. So these are a good example, or this particular flight plan is a good example that you can still use these color airways and they're still very, very useful when you are trying to get to these small airports in the Bahamas because as you know, the Bahamas is huge in terms of uh, the islands scattered throughout. So these airways do serve a purpose. They still have a sense of utility, but just not going through those major populated and heavily trafficked terminal areas. But this flight plan is good nonetheless. Now, 
we're getting into some test flight plans. Look at this. Modix Red Triple Eight, St. Croix number 55, Nassau, Fowey Niner, and to Miami. Here's an example. We do not want to use the, the colored airways like we did in the previous example. We're not going to the Bahamas. We're going to Miami. There's a better way to do it. So ATS Legacy Route, we can do better. And here's how we are going to do it. The 10 Amendment, again, no surprise there. Modix, Yankee 260 takes us to a Coney, and a Coney proving its worth. From a Coney, they are going to take us all the way to, you know, joining Yankee 308 to Fowey for the Fowey Niner or the Flipper 7. How wonderful is that? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Next one. Yet again, we're taking a look at legacy routing, trying to get to Wilmington. Wilmington. So instead of using that, and it may look correct, but look, we are going northwest bound over Elmuck on Yankee 585. We can do better. We're going to, we're going to Don Koo. We're trying to get the arena. We have to go over Don Koo as per the SOP, and we don't want to have bracket it. Let's just fix it. Here's how you fix it. Very simple stuff. We're looking at the fix Illery, and Illery is the jumping off point, the impetus for Yankee 185. Don Koo, as you see, they're very useful. And from Don Koo, they're going to go direct Leton, following the letters of agreement, and join Nemo 451 to Oldie. Awesome job. And the last one. Not so good. We can simplify this by adding the star. Now, this is a little detail oriented, right? Maybe a little in all attendance, but as we see there, Port of France, uh, Yankee 25, Coney, Yankee 300, Haggett, Yankee 300, Nassau, Bahama Route 55, Victor to Prune, Bahama Route 55, Victor Ray J, Amber 55, again, uh, Bimini, Fort Lauderdale. No star and a whole bunch of convoluted twists and turns on various ATS and RNAV routes. Let's just simplify it. A lot less to look at and streamline the route. Amen. That. And again, we're going to use a Coney because it's in the flight plan. Thank you, 280 to Sapo. Thank you, 399 to Bimini. And we're going to sign the waving five. Or Lauderdale. Perfect. Fixed it. Send those amendments. Now we have to follow through. We made the amendments and you may or may not know that we will get a new flight progress trip to replace these ones. So we need to make sure we let everybody know what we did and how do we do that? Well, we're going to follow through and follow through to the next slide. All right. So we are back here and let us show everybody what exactly we have done. Just in case if we get relieved, we need to make sure we let the next sector know, our predecessors to the sector, understand this is the thing that they have to do, some carryover things that we have to follow through on. And here is how we do that as an A side. You did not save that particular new strip for November 7, Mike Bravo, but you did write down what exactly you did and you check marked it because that's in the machine and you put FRC in the remarks. Yet again, full route clearance in the remarks section saying, hey, this guy's going to require a full route clearance. Yet again, full route clearance to Fort Pierce. Full route clearance slash lead bill. Hey, you don't have to give the clearance all the way to Austin, but you do have to give it to the Leeville Vortec. Yet again, full route clearance. If you remember, this one's all the way to Fort Lauderdale. Full route clearance to Beard. Very good. You don't have to give it all the way to Kilo, Romeo, Oscar, Gulf, but you do at least have to give it to Baird or Beard. Full route clearance all the way to the Miami airport. And full route clearance only up until Oldie, including Oldie. Wonderful. And that's all you have to do. Mark up the strip accordingly. Write it in red. Any pertinent remarks, FRC being the most important thing, and you're giving a fix. In some of these examples, you only have to give it up until this point. And there, you have finished the job and you have done an excellent job combing through, revising routes, and making things easier and more efficient, giving the user some benefits, giving your fellow controllers that are in different facilities benefits. It's a great job. All right. Wonderful. What's that poetic saying go about not being afraid of the rain because you're the storm? Well, you are. You're a storm of quality, good, sound perfect routings, more or less perfect. You know, I guess that's a relative term. But you should strive to always make sure that the aircraft are on efficient routes. Try to limit your interaction with app racking, approval requesting people on particular routes. Try to make it standard. It's a good precedent to set. 
It's a good idea to oblige your LOAs and your SOPs. That's why they're there in the first place to make coordination occur a lot less, or at least manual and verbal coordination. It's awesome whenever things are just running like a well oiled machine, firing on all cylinders. Could not be any more proud. We had a great 55 minute uh, little chat here about preferential routing. Maybe we'll do one more in the series, but we took care of a very important aspect today on how to get out of the San Juan terminal area. It's very easy out of New York. If you remember those Lima Airways, they're straight, they're narrow, they converge on common points and take you to a pretty rewarding area in the NAS where you can just jump off just about anywhere. Or in the case, if they are trying to terminate on the East Coast, bam, they are there. And anything really after the fact is up to Washington or New York Center. The Miami stuff, a little more tricky, a little more complex because we are combing through these archaic, uh, and that's not meant to be offensive, but these archaic uh, remnants of an air traffic control era gone by when we were using line of sight and navigates jumping from island to island where you can continue on with these airways based upon the service volume and service capabilities of navates, we have come a long way and we have these straight and narrow routes that take you right there, right where you need to be to start a, a star into these major terminal areas where a lot of the traffic that departs our part of the world, the Caribbean, a lot of our traffic is going there. So it's good. It's good for everybody. So very proud of you guys uh, in uh, understanding that and trying to uh, reach that level of attainment when it comes to combing through those routes and proposals or even active flight plans if need be. Wonderful job, guys. I am so happy that we spent this time together. I am always thankful that we have this forum to go back and forth and talk. Uh, just really just happy to be uh, doing this work and I hope you are too. So remember, uh, keep those attitudes just like your separation positive and I will see you next time. Good day guys.